Okay, that's done. Let's see what has happened. Oh, that's not bad. So, the, so it's air has gone down to a thousand. I'm excited. Does that mean that it's learned? Good morning, vlog. Today we're going to be implementing Nestrov's momentum update and momentum update in our RNN in Excel. Before we get there, I woke up. I'm quite late this morning. It's 8:30. I woke up at around six, and I went, "Nope, I need more sleep," which is fair got to listen to your body sometimes. So I slept in for an, uh, for about like another hour and a half or so. I woke up at like 7.45, something like that. So yeah, yeah. So I'm just getting started right now. I have to edit yes yesterday's vlog. And once that's done, then I'll start working on adding momentum update into Excel. So Okay, here's, here's the thing, guys. I got no work done today. I'll be very honest. I'm supposed to get work done, but I had some like really, really important things I had to take care of. And I'm glad I finally got the chance and finally got the time to, to take care of them. Um, and so, but that, what that means is that I got nothing done for today. I was planning to keep the talking head to a minimum for this episode, just to try out that style. But here we are. It's about 9 PM. <laughs> it's been almost a full 12 hours <laughs> where I've done nothing. So I'll, I'll probably, I'll probably just, um, try coding for about an hour. There's absolutely no way I'll get to um, editing this footage tonight. I'm just going to pass out around like 12 or 11, hopefully. I'll probably edit this tomorrow morning, but for now, at least, let's just go through. Let's just try to implement Nestrov's momentum and momentum update to our RNN um, and just see how that goes, really. So before we get into Nestrov and like any momentum stuff, I just want to show you guys the results of the additional training that I did. Hasn't really improved the model that much. The error, I think what we had at about a thousand was three point something. Yeah, so it was like about 3.5. So when I trained it for an additional thousand epochs, it just went down by like 0.5, which isn't which isn't amazing and we see it's still it's still not fixed it's still outputting the wrong the wrong letter at the last time step so that's that's definitely not it's definitely not fixed oh well so let's begin with momentum because momentum is the easier of the two i just want to remind myself how momentum update works i have to remind myself of a couple of things about momentum I'll just pull up my notes Actually, let me just put up the CS21231 lecture notes or notes just generally. These are golden. So momentum and, and both momentum update and Nestrov's momentum update. I know that what they're supposed to be doing is they're supposed to be. So, so momentum, if we, if we think of it like a ball, it tries to figure out where down the slope the ball would move fastest, where it will gain the most momentum. And it'll just, it'll, 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 it'll try to find it and go and go down that um, that that area so the steepest hill uh, is, is what is what it looks for Nestrov's momentum update I think what it does is that it takes a, it takes a look ahead at the next point and then it tries to find the steepest hill at that point and so it just help, it's just going faster because it's it's already looking ahead I need to eat too I need to stop these like really late night dinners okay so I mean it's quite simple actually this is a formula here for momentum update so it's not really gonna be too too difficult to to implement let's do uh, you know what? Let's do that. I was gonna. I was actually thinking of skipping it and then just doing Nestrov's momentum update. But let, let's do this. It shouldn't really take too long. How many times do I say that? And then I take me two hours. But really, it shouldn't take too long. And then we'll do Nestrov's. Okay. So let's just go ahead and let's just duplicate this. We're just gonna call it RNN. As you can see, this is a very chaotic worksheet. Like nothing's labeled. Data is just all over the place. This would give most people anxiety, like a panic attack. I I like the chaos. I need to move these guys out of the way. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've created a momentum variable for all of our different weights. So we have our delta weights and then we have momentum variables that we'll be incorporating. We also have our bias, uh, our, our, our bias deltas. We'll also be creating, uh, we'll also be using momentum to update them as well. So updating momentum is quite simple. All we're going to be doing is we're just going to be grabbing, actually, let me just delete this, pulling up this CS231 notes. All we're going to be doing is we're going to be grabbing our mu. So let me create a new variable, call it mu. I think mu, what's the, what's the usual? Okay, 0.9. It's really bugging me how slow this computer is right now. Okay, so we're going to grab our mu. We're going to multiply that by our old v. And then we're going to add, sorry, we're going to subtract our learning rate. Uh, we're going to subtract multiplication of that by the delta weights. 
we have here. So that's that. I'm gonna copy formula for here. Okay, so now we have our momentum variable implemented. What we now need is to add it to our weights function. Sorry, to add it to the updates function. Now we're gonna have to do some math and see whether or not I can add the bias to the weight matrix for, for um, the weights that connect the, the input to the hidden layer and the weights that connect the hidden layer to itself. I'm gonna have to see what happens if I add bias um, connections to those to those matrices. It's gonna be like the same parameters, the same values. I just wanna see if it affects the math at all, which it probably will, but no, I actually don't think it will. I think one of them should only have bias though. So maybe not on the input weights, but maybe on the hidden weights, maybe I have bias there because then, because I'm, I'm kind of thinking ahead, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but then when you want to implement or when you want to scale this up and build a library around it, you would probably want, because you, you want to have the ability to have multiple layers, right? So, um, and I'm just thinking about how my current neural, neural, neural network library is structured. It just adds a bias to every, to every single, every single set of weights that it encounters. And so maybe for recurrent, I don't have, I don't have a bias. Um, I don't have bias weights for the, for the first set of synapses that connect the input to the hidden layer, but maybe on the synapses that connect hidden layers to themselves subsequently, um, I have a bias. I'll think about that. I'll think about that. This is why I like vlogging. It's like, you guys are my rubber ducks. I speak to you and you guys help me figure this stuff out. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. I need to quickly finish this up and get go to bed. No, so what we're just going to be doing is we're just going to be taking our old weights and we're just going to be adding our uh, momentum variable to it. So it's quite simple. And that's that. Pretty much, pretty much implemented momentum. I knew this was going to be, I mean, not jinx it because we haven't trained it yet. Okay, so let's just record a new macro for our, our RNN record macro uh, update. RNN mo momentum. So what we want is uh, we want it to refresh. I'm gonna hit Shift F9. Then what we want for it to do is we want for it to start copying these weights, pasting them into their respective areas. LHVV, going back, grabbing a new set of weights. Right, because what we've done is so that refresh set momentum. And so now what we're doing is, and it's at new weights. And so now what we're doing is we're just copying these new weights over, and then we will set the old value for momentum. Okay, it's weight one done, weights two, and then weights three. And then start copying over, finally, our momentum and just save it as old momentum before we move to the next time step. And that's it for the macro. So I'm just gonna stop recording. I'm going to assign this button to the new macro that we just created. Update RNN momentum. And I'm just going to come in here and just really quickly it should be in module four, I believe. Yep, module four. Just copy this guy here. Next I. Okay, go ahead. Hit save on that. And what I'll actually initially do is I'll, I'll only run it for a hundred, hundred, um, hundred epochs just so we can quickly tell, quickly see if there's anything wrong. Let's do it. Let's run it. Yeah, this is a very low energy vlog, eh? That's how tired I am. Okay, I think it's I think it's decreasing. I started from five, now we're at four. Why is my graph not working though? Ah, this graph is useless. Okay, so now that that's working, let me set it for another, I guess, thousand epochs. And I will see you guys in about 15 minutes once it's done training. Okay, that's done. Let's see what has happened. Oh, that's not bad. So, the, so it's error's gone down to a thousand. I'm excited. Does that mean that it's learnt? Oh my god. I'm so confused as to why it's not learned. Then what? Do I just train it for another thousand? Or yeah, I'm very confused. Error's now one, but we're still not. This is still not working properly. Oof. Okay. But I mean, the point is, um, actually let's graph it. Let me graph it. The point is now that we're using momentum update and it should be, it should be a lot faster. Yeah. So whereas our, our normal RNN, it plateaued, 
and I think just got stuck in a local minimum. What you can see is, let me just grab them on the same, same chart. Uh, okay, this one has 2,000 instances. So I'm just gonna grab 1,000. So the this one here is our momentum update. And I guess, I guess, you know, that it got a better set of initial weights. So maybe it's not necessarily that it's performed super, super, super well, but the, uh, as you can see, especially at the beginning, it's a very, it's a very steep descent and I'd say it's maintained. It's pretty steep descent. So I could probably train it for another thousand epochs and it'd probably get, it'd probably get better than, than, than it already is. So it looks like it's working. Um, I, I'm going to out of curiosity train it but I'm also going to go to bed. So that's going to be it for today. Tomorrow we're going to be working on Nestrov's momentum. Nestrov's momentum will we'll cross that bridge and I'll explain it when we get there just so I don't do, uh, I don't repeat myself. Thanks for watching.